family and friends, thank you for joining me at what else? Maria loves to talk. That's right. Nope, not talking about candles, not talking about perfume. Uh, these next couple of videos, I will be most likely talking about crime, crime, true crime, cheating, blah, 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 and police and missing person. So with this one, again, as I stated, and I have finally, I was trying to put off um, not doing this one because I wanted to ask some more, but I'm, I'm gonna just go ahead. So with this uh, video, I will be talking about uh, the Miss, Missy Beavers, uh, the lady that uh, was attacked, deleted in Mytholian, Texas. And this been going, this now I think it's like six or maybe five years no arrests, nothing, and everybody's been debating. Yes, you know I'm nosy. I looked at Reddit and another true crime web sleuth uh, women who are just uh, on it, looking, studying it. So hey, so this is something you're interested in. Stay tuned. Go get you some snacks. Come on back. If it's not, hey, you guys, it's a billion videos on YouTube, and you can make your own video for free. How awesome is that? So, hey, let's go ahead and get into this video. Okay, so starting again for the people, and I'm not gonna go into a long, long, uh, because I've got like a lot more stuff to cover today, if I can. So, when I saw this story, when I first remember hearing about it, I knew it, it reminded me of another story. And if you are a crime sleuth, if you are a Nancy Drew, if you are a, um, I don't know, wannabe Nancy Grace, I, I don't know, maybe you do, maybe you're not, or Christy, Agatha Christy, you remember this story. Re remember the story of the doctor that uh, was on vacation with her family in Florida, and then she came back home to Texas, and uh, she was deleted and during that time uh there was like some kind of conspiracy that there was someone out there uh deleting or whacking all the holistic doctors all those um doctors that didn't believe in the vaccinations not not the covid because covid wasn't out then okay so let me go to her story first Okay, so this lady's story, the doctor that uh, was deleted, her name was Dr. Seavers. Let me try to get her full name here. Dr. Teresa Seavers. And I'll give a little backstory. And this is from A&E. I, Mark Seavers, I don't know if I can say this where I'm going to say blood, B-L-U-D-G, and then it ends with N-E-D his wife, Teresa Sivers, uh, to death. Okay, and this dude, creepy old, ugly, bald-headed dude, but then I might be biased. I don't, I'm not, I do have a man. He's got a head full of hair. Uh, my father had a head full of hair. My mama's daddy had a full, head full of hair. Um, my two, three, my uncles had, I, 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 I don't, I've never liked bald men or men with uh, receding hairlines. Um, I know a lot of women think bald men are sexy, but okay, so maybe that's why he's just creepy to me. So here, this is how, I'm sorry, here's how the story goes. The last time Dr. Uh, Teresa Severs was seen alive in public, she was at a Southwest Florida International Airport returning to work from a family vacation while her husband and two daughters stayed behind. I do remember that. But Severs didn't show up at the medical office the next day. A few hours later, a neighbor sent by Severs' husband to check in found her bloody body on the kitchen floor beaten to with a hammer. She's bashed in the back of the head and waited. He purposely waited a while to have this neighbor go and check on the wife to make sure she was dead cold. The Severs case starts cold as well. Initially, investigators were stumped. The house hadn't been ransacked and a safe with more than 40,000 cash in it had been untouched.
investigation to a second suspect, Jimmy Ray Rogers. So we got Curtis Wayne Wright and Jimmy Ray Rogers. Let's keep it real. There's no way a woman, one woman, unless she has uh, karate skills, self-defense skills, unless she's related to Chuck Norris, a regular normal woman, maybe not even a, a police woman, especially if they catch you off guard, would have been able to fight off these two career criminal thugs, okay? In a Wig News exclusive, for the first time tonight, we're hearing from one of the three convicted killers in the death of Dr. Teresa Sievers. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lois Tomey. I'm Chris Safadi. Her husband is on death row, convicted of hiring two people to do it. Curtis Wayne Wright, his childhood friend, took a plea to testify and got 25 years. The other, Jimmy Rogers, got life for second-degree murder. Rogers never testified at his trial. He reached out to me, wanting to tell his side of the story. He's hoping for a new trial. At his trial, his defense claimed there was no proof that Rogers was even at the Seavers' house since investigators didn't find DNA evidence. But when we interviewed him in prison, Rogers told me he was there and says that's about the only part of his story that matches what the jury heard. There's no conspiracy. We never hid where we're going, never hid where we is at. Jimmy Rogers, seven years after the murder of Dr. Teresa Seavers, now calls into question the testimony of his one-time friend, Curtis Wayne Wright. She came home unexpectedly. Wright told the jury he and Rogers were hired by Mark Seavers to kill his wife, Dr. Teresa Seavers, when she got to her home from a family vacation and promised a big payday. Wright testified she surprised them getting home earlier than expected and that both he and Rogers swung the hammers that killed her. Rogers says no. We parked in the driveway. We waited there in the driveway for her to show up for at least a half an hour. Rogers says the two had been hired to do work for the Seavers family and had been invited to stay at the house, but Wright got the dates wrong. Door opens up before she ever made it into her drive. As she pulls into there, me and Wayne, we're already outside the vehicle, got our backpacks ready to spend the night. We walk into the garage. She seemed to already be in a bad mood. Immediately as soon as she gets out of the vehicle, like, what are you doing here? Like, immediately with an attitude, Wayne tells her how he forgot that they were going out of town, that he messed up the times. She's angry, frustrated, yelling at him. She's talking with her hand. She's yelling at him. She's cussing at him. She's telling him how he's incompetent. While they're in the middle of their argument, yelling at each other, they're standing right there. She just unpacked all of the stuff out of the garage, just closed the garage door. It's, I'm standing on one side of the van over here. Wayne's standing at the front of the van facing her, and they're closer together than you and I right now. I mean, they're literally arm reach apart from each other, standing right there at the deep freeze where all her stuff is. Wayne picks up the hammer off the deep freeze and strikes her in the face with it. She runs down the hallway into the kitchen and he chases after her. I come chasing after Wayne. I'm telling Wayne to stop, stop. He's grabbing her by the hair. They tussle around there inside the kitchen. And then, give me a sec. So then they, after they're tussling around there in the kitchen, he gets her down to where she's on her hands and knees, right down, uh, next to by the refrigerator and he continuously strikes her in the head. Rogers claims it was Wright and Wright alone who killed Dr. Seavers. He then points the hammer at me and as he points the hammer at me, I put my hands up and I tell him like, I didn't see Those are my exact words, like I didn't see So by your count of this story then, virtually everything that we heard at trial is wrong. Yes. Rogers makes dozens of claims now about inconsistent stories and evidence and says the two witnesses whose testimony convicted him, Wright, and his former girlfriend, Taylor Showmaker, both lied. I asked him if he killed her and he said yeah. And then I asked him if he if he shot her with a gun and he said no. And then I asked him how, well, how, and he said with a hammer. Rogers believes detectives fed potential witnesses answers. I asked former police officer and FGCU criminal justice professor Dr. David Thomas to watch Wright's and Showmaker's videotaped interrogations, and he didn't see any problem. What I, I thought was very interesting is a tactic that I probably would have never used, but um, where the detective actually had the facts, he told him what the facts were. He let him lie through the process. You're not feeding him. You allowed him to hang himself. 
Rogers sent us pages of written and typed notes showing what he claims are inconsistencies in testimony and trial evidence. You don't get that second bite at the apple. Pam C., a lawyer who also teaches criminal justice at FGCU, says at this point, after trial and a failed appeal, there's not much question. She says the time to bring all this up has passed. The only options left, a motion for a new trial. But that requires new evidence. New evidence means something that was not in existence at the time of the trial. All of the things that Mr. Rogers is saying now would have been in existence at the time of the trial. And one of the biggest things working against Rogers. He did not report it. If, if that's his argument that he, you know, so he's just as guilty. But Rogers says Wright threatened to kill him as well more than once that night. And that's where I see Wayne. Wayne's taking off his bloody clothes and he's putting them in his backpack. And then he's putting on his clean clothes because we packed clothes for this trip to stay in Florida. And then we got inside the car and Wayne's threatening me at that point inside the car, telling me how he's going to kill me, how he's going to kill Taylor, and how he's going to kill Taylor's children if I go to the cops. Now, Rogers says he's going to file a motion. Yeah, this lady spoke with Rogers' girlfriend. The girlfriend, I'm so glad. Thank you, girlfriend. Because in a lot of cases, family members, lovers, they keep their mouths shut. They don't want to tell on their loved one. Or, or hey, they might have been threatened. They might be scared. They, they might have threatened to do something to their kids or to their parents. So the 2021 or arguments were heard in Mark Sears' appeal. His lawyers are asking for a new trial. New trial? You need to be put on the guillotine. Judge Cow was unmoved and sentenced, so he was sentenced to death on January the 3rd, 2020. You said that you was having marital problems. You were scared the wife was going to take the kids away. The wife is the one who was making the money. If you, if you, if a parent or, or it could be a woman, if you truly love your kids, then you're not going to plan to delete their dad. If you truly love your kids, the husband, the boyfriend, you're not going to delete your children's mother. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, Missy Beavers here right quick. Um, everybody's talking about was it a man, was it a woman who did it? Uh, I went here right quick to look at the updates to see, has there been any up, updates, any arrests? Okay, so this is from WBAP. Mithlodian police uh, say Missy Beaver's case still active five years after murder. Uh, this was written April 14, 2021. Uh, Missy Beaver's, uh, remember she was a um, fitness, uh, I wanna say fitness guru, health guru, made appointments to have a, uh, training done or i don't know i don't know why they would be work working out early like at five o'clock in the morning i'm sorry five o'clock in the morning i'm i'm still sleeping i'm sorry so uh someone attacked her some some weird crazy person uh dressed up as a police attacked her inside the church nobody was supposed to be there but her and then she was i think she got there like almost like an hour early for her students for answers it's been a tumultuous five years for Brandon Beavers. Having this being prolonged, is it's been very difficult for the, us and the kids and Missy's family in particular. On April 18th, 2016, Brandon's wife and mother of his three daughters, Missy Beavers, arrived at the Creekside Church in Midlothian around 4.30 a.m. to prepare for her Camp Gladiator class. 30 minutes later, her students walked in to find Missy dead. Brandon was on an annual fishing trip in Biloxi, Mississippi, when he got a call from one of Missy's students who was at the church. He told me, he said, uh, Missy's no longer with us. And I, I didn't know. As he made his way back to Texas, police in Midlothian were on the scene and stunned at what was captured on video cameras inside the church. A suspect roaming around, dressed in what looked like police SWAT gear. It certainly is a strange occurrence at this time of morning for a church to be burglarized early in the morning. That same day, Chief Carl Smith released the video. That was something we wanted to push out as early as possible so that we could deal with it 
up front. Police wanted the community to take a close look at how the person was dressed and how they walked. The video went viral and the department was swamped with thousands of tips. Because it grabbed the nation's interest, um, it was uh, a mass amount of data coming in from incredible sources. Police who didn't go on camera escorted an ATF K-9 team into the Creekside Church of Christ to look for any clues. After Federal, state, and local Terry agencies Beavers poured over the tips and London. evidence, but none of it has panned out. It is difficult to believe that five years later that we haven't made an arrest. To this day, police aren't able to say if the suspect is a man or a woman. I just assumed it was a guy, you know, it's just kind of a generic uh, painting of the brush on that, but I, I think it's a woman. I definitely think it's a woman. That's another one that is very difficult to tell because of the clothing. It doesn't accentuate any type of feature. It hides features. The video shows the suspect was in the church at least 30 minutes before Missy arrived. At first, it looked like a burglary, but nothing was stolen. The fact that this person did was willing to spend the time to dress up and overcome being on video, those kinds of things, uh, that tells me that they, there was, a, there's a little uh, aspect of vindictiveness in that. But who would want to kill the young mother of three who by all accounts was loved in the community? She was awesome. She was really sweet. Um, you could tell she was humble. Brandon at first wanted to believe this was a random act, but over the years has changed his opinion. I've, I've flip-flopped on this over the years, but I can only I can only offer an opinion based on insight, and I, I, I kind of feel she was targeted. Police have looked at several persons of interest. In fact, Brandon and his father were investigated. It's taken a toll. You know, I've been through counseling. I've had psychiatric treatments for PTSD and, and anxiety and things like that. Police say without a suspect, it's been hard to come up with a motive or even a theory on what happened and why Missy was murdered. I would tell you that we have not ruled out or confirmed one path or the other. The department is still treating this like an active investigation and not a cold case. They've hired new detectives to take a fresh look at the evidence and re-interview the witnesses. Meanwhile, one of Missy's former co-workers started a podcast a year ago to keep the case in the public eye. I think fresh eyes is always helpful. You know, sometimes you can look at something so long that it makes you dizzy or cross-eyed, and then somebody else comes along and goes right there. But with little evidence, will there ever be justice for Missy? Do you think it will be solved? Absolutely. Absolutely. As time goes on, Brandon Beaver says he holds on to the memories and still has the last message Missy left on his phone the night before she was killed. Does it comfort you? It does because when you hear it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it embodies her personality, you know? And that's what I remember the most. In Midlothian. He was even at the, either the funeral or the wake and people had noticed he had the similar bill in the gate, uh, and they look into him, and it wasn't him because they said this man is six foot one, and the person who did it was no taller than five foot eight. The stuff on his computer, he's a, a pervert, a, a, I'm gonna say alleged pervert into into kids. Absolute page where uh, people were saying, oh yeah, they think it's. Uh, the husband, his name is Randy, his um, dad, because the dad had blood on his shirt and took it to the cleaners and come to find out it was, I, I don't know what, why would you have dog blood? That makes me even still kind of question him. They said the blood that was on his shirt was dog blood. You know what? He really has the built of that, that, that figure, that monster that was in that church at Creekside just lurching around, just lurking around. He has that build of that, that uh, person that knows on another site I read, I don't know if it was Reddit or wherever, they mentioned that uh, she had received, 
I don't know if it was a text message or some kind of message. I don't know if it was that day or as she was entering into the facility or later on in, earlier in the week, text. And it wasn't from her husband. So they were supposedly getting back, getting their marriage back on track. Now, I read something that her husband said, because you know I keep reading, that he didn't really want to relive this, that he just want to go on with his life with his kids. Um, I'm sorry. If someone or somebody, um, some monster took your wife out in that type of horrific way, I believe they said that when they found her, there was a hammer left. I'm wondering if there was a hammer, there wasn't any prints or, but the person, the monster, the creep that was walking through the church, he had gloves. He was just, I mean, he was just really ready to go, like he was going to go into a fight with a, a tiger or something. So maybe they couldn't lift any fingerprints, but uh, she had marks on her face. They said it was puncture wounds to her face, to her chest. And we know what a hammer looked like. You've got that little round part on one side, and then you have that pick looking thing on the other side to like when you're trying to pull out nail out of a wall. But getting back to hubby, if my hubby, something happened, I wanna know. I'm gonna investigate on my own or if I have to hire someone, I wanna know. I came up to, came that I got and I'm trying to see what day this was. This was like, this was about two weeks ago. What date is this? I try to date everything. This looks like it's from, I'm not sure. Okay, this looks like about almost two weeks, a week and a half, maybe more, closer to two weeks, like the beginning of January. And I'm not gonna give you, cause I'm not gonna put the whole word because from what I've been seeing from other YouTubers, uh, people are copying other folks. Uh, I don't uh, do tarot cards and all that. I, I will watch some of the people and watch my video. Shows you some of the ones that I watched that was pretty good, that was on the money when it came to the Idaho Four and uh, Brian Kohlberger, that little demonic Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And I saw some of them were saying, yeah, and people coming up on my page and they're copying my stuff, da, da, da. So it, all I, this is what I got. And it wasn't tarot cards. It, you know, I watch TV eat maybe i guess got full eating a lot of food i don't know eating gumbo and, and then this came and fell asleep drove off whatever and sometimes things just come to me i'm just driving you know we're just driving and i'm just looking out something come to me or standing in line at walmart or kroger's and and i'm just a person to just um i don't know what you call it just write and I'm like, I wrote this somewhere. Where is it? I can't find it. So, hey, get, let's get on with it. Okay, so every, so the site, my second, my third web sleuth, which is mainly a, a female site that I went on, everybody, they took a test and everybody said, it's a man, it's a man. Because a lot of people are saying it's a woman, it's a woman. So uh, I really believe it was a woman as well because I'm, I'm kind of like was going with what everybody was saying. It's a woman, it's a woman by her bill and, and uh, something that one of the psychics, one of the tarot readers uh, has said that she believed it was a woman um, and that possibly this woman husband was a cop and possibly this woman had mental uh, condition and was jealous of Missy. And, and it's possible because as you see, Missy, young, attractive, well, she was not young, young, but a middle-aged woman, young, in shape. And you have women, I'm not one of them, who get jealous of other, and I have another story, another video. Women get jealous of other women. You might get jealous because she has a better shape and your husband, other men are looking at this woman or her hair is better than your hair and they get jealous. Women can be catty like that, but to the point of to delete someone, I, I don't think I could do it. So, so here uh, I got the numbers and I didn't get the whole number, but the first numbers I got was 1339 or 1339. And then I'm gonna go back to something 
about the cops. I got, and I'm not going to say the full name, and it is some two two male names. And when you think of it, you can't put them together to make one full name. But uh, so I got Mar. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the name, and you can just fill in the blank what Mar is. But it's a male's name. It's a popular male name, and I got a S A. Uh, also, so I was like, that's where I got an M. I feel like, uh, what's that lady's name from the Wheel of, not Wheel of Fortune, um, y'all know, yeah, Wheel of Fortune, I got an M, uh, what's the psychic, the male psychic, John Edwards, and I got an S, make a long story short, they're both male names, men names, so that tells me right there, which I think my inner spirit was letting me know, no, this is not a woman, this is a man that we're looking for. I don't know what the numbers 1339 is. I got, and I know the cops or the police told us that she was beat with a hammer. I should have had a hammer here uh, or a tech with a hammer. I got laying, I don't remember, I don't know if they said how she was found, but I got laying on the back and looking up at this person who was doing this and I got um, I don't want to use the word strangle, but that's what I had got. So it could have been a fight because she was um, doing gladiator training or she's, you know, I, I can look at this lady until she's a fighter. She didn't, she didn't go down without trying to, to do something. So that's what I got was strangle, okay, or something similar to that. Maybe they... This person, this monster, put his hand up on her like that. Okay, so the last thing, and I actually did hear what sound like a woman's voice or, or the word, the words. And it says, looking for affection. Went, went out the back door or something that I took the back door. Went out looking for affection. I was like, what? So you can, however y'all read into it, you know, that's how, um, I don't know what it could mean. It could mean that, hey, she's admitting that, yeah, we had a little rough patch. You know, I was getting uh, hit on. Men were looking at me. Men was commenting on, you know, my beauty, my figure. Uh, and, you know, it could be something like that. It could also mean that maybe she was having second thoughts about going back to her husband. Maybe she really wanted to uh, leave him and whoever this person. And I wonder, did the police look at the text, who this text was from that she received the flirt flirtatious uh, text? Getting back to the police, I don't know if anybody remember when those the little boy was killed in California about two years ago from road rage. It was a young couple driving a little white Volkswagen or Jetta, and they did the police did went in and did this big search, and it took them a couple months, and they finally tracked the couple that had shot into that woman's car and killed her baby. And they had took their little white gel and had hid it at mama or grandma house and had put a turf or something over it. I don't know, are they doing that? Did they do that? If y'all know that it's an infinity or it's an ultima, that shouldn't really be hard for them to zero in on all the cars in that area of cars that went through a, I don't know, a toll road or a, a major street. I'm hoping, praying, uh, again, lift uh, Missy Beavers and her family up, as well as the lady, uh, to Dr. Seavers, because this uh, this case, five years, that needs six, really six years, almost, that needs to be solved. And that's for any missing person or domestic, or I don't know if it was domestic, that those cases need to be solved. But then as y'all saw my video, we've got, you know, cops out there like in Tennessee where they playing Peyton Place in the on the police force. So maybe that's why a lot of these cases not being solved like they should because it's Peyton Place, you know, going on on the police force. 
uh, you know, they use the same energy. Yes, I'm fixing to be political. The same energy that they use when they pull these dudes over for, you know, the broken tail light or he resisted or da da da. If they go at them with this same enthusiasm and energy and the smoke and, and this fervor, uh, a lot of these uh, cases, missing persons, domestic, who done it? These cases, to me, this case here, Missy Beavers. That should have been solved two, three years ago. It should have really been solved the first year. I don't want to accuse the husband and his family, um, but I know Pat Brown, she said, uh, famous uh, profiler, that it was a burglary gone wrong, that Missy walked in and uh, interrupted the man. Also, one more thing uh, that I had picked up was uh, I don't know if it was the person or the feeling or the vibration I got uh, that they didn't mean for it to go that far. So maybe they were just trying to scare her or maybe it, uh, it was too much force that they yeah, put on her. But hey, if you hit somebody with a hammer, what in the heck you think is going to happen when you popping them with a hammer? Now you just smack them one time and run off was anything stolen this sounds so much this case sounds so much like the dr Teresa Severs case so that's what i wanted to bring up uh and compare the two and let y'all look at it and see what you think so again i want you to uh i want to just thank you for supporting my channel um Give me your comments. What you think about this? You know anything similar? Did you think it was a woman? Do you still think it is a woman? Hey, do you think it's her husband? Somebody related? Could it be the husband? Maybe he got a, a, a woman friend. Allegedly. So hey, again, thank you for watching Maria Lassie Talk. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you.